for our further encouragement from God's Word today. We'll have the, the message divided into four parts with four, four lessons here, four short lessons and encouragement leading into each of them. This is Tim. Tim is hungry. Sat down there at the, the table. Who does the sandwich belong to? Tim, seems like. This is Tom. Tim's brother. Who comes in and says, Hey, don't even think about eating a bite of that sandwich. You see, before Tim cozied up to the sandwich, Tom had assembled the sandwich, set it down on the table for a few moments as he walked away to the kitchen to get a nice drink to go with it. Does that change your perspective? Who does the sandwich belong to? This is Phil. Phil is the father of Tim and Tom. Phil comes in and says, did you boys use up all of the meat and all of the mayo and all of the lettuce and all of the, of the bread that I, I bought and bought, brought back from the store? Who in this picture can ultimately claim this food on the table belongs to me? Okay. Now maybe it's, I wanted to use a bit of a humorous example, or at least a lighthearted example, but I wanted to get us to a very important truth. And a truth that, that sometimes I think it is lost to us as we get busy in our days. I know it's the case for me. We put something together, we work, and then we, we buy things, we fill up the, the rooms in our home, or the fridge and pantry in our kitchen, or the bank accounts that we have. But who is the real owner can, who can ultimately claim it belongs to me? A key truth about all of our resources that we want to see today is this. The owner of everything ultimately is God. We are managers of what he entrusts and gives to us. He is the owner. Listen to David state that truth. And may the Holy Spirit fill us with the same thoughts of David and the same praise and thanks of David recorded in 1 Chronicles the reference there, 29 verses 10 to 13. Take over when it turns there. David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, Praise be to you, Lord, the God of our Father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor, for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. This is the word of our God. Another word of encouragement from the Old Testament is Psalm 78, which highlights to use our, our time to share God's truth. Let's sing the refrain and we'll speak responsibly the verses.
O my people, hear my teaching, listen to the words of my mouth. I will utter things from of old, what we have heard and what our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from our children. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord. for Jacob and established the law in Israel so the next generation would know them and they in turn would tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds but would keep his commands. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. You could, you could group them in any number of different ways. For our sake this morning, let's put them into the three categories as we think about them. Abilities, time, and material <clears throat> possessions. So, for the moment, pick one of those three. Abilities, time, or material possessions that you want to consider. Maybe, and we're going to do a question to discuss uh, husband and wife, if you're here together, maybe you want to discuss this together. Parent or grandparents, if you're here with kids, maybe you want to discuss this with the kids. If you're by yourself, you get to, you get to think it through, okay? Take five seconds. Pick your category. Abilities, time, or material possessions. Okay, here we go. So the question to answer is this with which, whichever category of God-given resources you pick, how might you use something like this, this pie chart, to, to picture your use of those God-given resources? So there's your, your question. And make sure to include what part represents your offerings to God. I'm going to give you... A minute and 47 seconds to discuss. Ready? Start. <coughs> How could you use this, this kind of image to picture your, your use of God-given resources? Abilities, time, or material possessions. Too much time? Okay. If I had my brother Tim here, we could talk about sharing our sandwich or the resources we have. But okay, I'm going to cancel this. Carol, you have your brother here. You guys could talk about that kind of thing too, maybe. Okay. If you talked about material possessions, maybe, maybe you, you did something like this and you said, well, 
I, I use this part of my resources to provide for my family, to, to pay the mortgage, to pay the bills, to buy the food. I use another percentage or portion segment of my resources to, to pay my taxes. I use a, another portion of my resources material to, to give my offering to church, and, and so on, right? As many parts as you, you have in there. If you chose abilities, you could answer, um, I use my abilities, and if I'm trying to picture that, maybe you, you come up with time too, right? A, a majority of the time is spent in my schooling, if I'm school age, or in my profession, if I'm working outside the home, right? Maybe then you divide up your other time. I use a portion of my time for things like recreation. I use a, a portion of my abilities and time for, for things here, serving, and things like singing. So, in whatever category you chose, abilities or time or material possessions, what did you come up with for that last part? What part represents your offerings to God? God would have us consider the answer as all of it. Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind. A second key truth about using our God-given resources is offering God praise isn't something limited to what we do here or as a, a, a church family, or what you put into the, the plate with your offering. Offering God's praise is something you have an opportunity to do in your entire life. He deserves such praise because, as we already discussed, everything ultimately comes from Him and belongs to Him. We, as Christians, understand he deserves that kind of praise for another reason. Jesus paid to free us. Jesus paid to, to free us from our sin and the punishment of hell. He did that by how he came. And he lived without sin. And he took the punishment that our sins deserved when he suffered on the cross. Jesus gives peace with God. Jesus gives eternal life with God to everyone who trusts Him, who trusts that His saving work is the way to God. And Jesus is here. He promises to remain with us, to care for us every moment of every day. That's what moves us to want our whole life to be one where we offer Praise to the Lord. Our second reading to encourage us is taken from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. We'll respond with the, the song of praise.
can we drill down a little more on that topic? That's a, a phrase that one of the architects has said a few times as we've met with them. Um, they want to talk more about one of the, the specific points that we brought up and to get more, more detail about it. <clears throat> I want us to drill down a little more on the topic of using the resource of our time. We've got another question to discuss. The goal is to help us see how to best manage our time in a, in a concrete way to hopefully see that. Again, maybe husband and wife, if you're here together, you discuss this, parent or grandparent with your kids, or if you're on your own, you're thinking, thinking this through. Ready for the question? Here we go. So here's the question. Say you had a bank account that credited your account with $1,440 each day, and, and it was simply gifted to you, okay, into your account, with these realities attached. Number one, no amount of the money is carried over to the next day. So, whatever amount you leave unwithdrawn, or whatever amount you don't use up in that day, it's simply, it's gone then. Okay, got it? If that's the case, how would you go about this opportunity? What would you, you do with the money, and, and how would you, you, you use it? Take a, a minute and 17 seconds and, and talk about it. I'm, I'm going down. <coughs> specifics you maybe talked about, but did anyone have something like this? I, I plan for how I'm going to withdraw every one of those dollars and how I could use them wisely to maximize the, the impact that I could have to bring benefit for not only for myself, but for, for the other people around me. Wouldn't that bring you joy? Now, you remember I said I wanted to drill down a little more deeply into the topic of using the resource of our time, but our question had a dollar sign in it. So how does the time element connect? How many minutes are you and I gifted with by God every day? 24 hours, 60 minutes. So picture that each day God gifts 1,440 minutes into an account for you. Consider how each day you would want to use that, right? You can't, you can't carry over the minutes from one day to the next. Once you spend the minutes on something, you can't, you can't get it back to spend on something else. When you view it this way, does it help you answer how you want to approach the management of your your time resource. You want to use it wisely. And you want to use it to bring the maximum impact you can for the good of not just yourself, but those around you whom you, you love and can help. You and I have an opportunity to give God praise through all the use of our time. That's a third key truth we want to think about and take away today as we talk about managing the resources God gives us. 
as a, a father and mother care for a child, they are giving praise to God. If that action flows from a heart of love filled with the love of Jesus and a knowledge of what Jesus has done for us. If your job is sweeping floors or stocking shelves or ringing up people at a cash register, each of those deeds can include praise for Jesus. If you're doing that in order to provide for your family, if you're doing that, and as you do it, you're doing it to serve others with the time and the gifts that God has given you, and maybe along the way to share some of the joy that you have in Jesus in little ways, to share and let people see the peace you know from His forgiveness. As you think about using all your time to praise God, also think about setting priorities. Because there are certain things that God says He doesn't want you to go without. They're that important. They're that important for your well-being and to help those around you. So put on that list of priorities time with the Lord, time hearing His Word, time to, to study and hear the Bible. And put on that list making time to share those truths of God with those I love, whether that be in your home with your family or whether that be in a setting like this with your church family. From there... Your other ways of using time will fit into place as you strive to praise God. Hear the encouragement that we are given in Colossians chapter 3, a single verse, verse 17. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. We'll sing the verses of reply. in order to give the Lord praise. My, to express my, my faith in Him, to express my, my joy of being His child, to express my confidence in His wisdom. If that's the big picture, then you'll also have the goal, I want to give some of what God has given me in return to Him for the work of sharing His, his truth of spreading his truth. Here's a picture you might use as you, you have the big, the big image of using all of your material possessions and praise of God. Some companies have a department that's receiving, things come in, and then a distribution portion where things go out. If we picture our lives in a similar way, we maybe can get a little bit of a concept of using our material resources. We receive things, right? Whether that's from a paycheck when you work and you have income, or from gifts, or from other ways we, we receive. And then God has different purposes for which He wants us to use those resources and distribute them. You can think again back to when we talked about for caring for your family in different elements. You can think about when we talked about taxes. You use some to help others as you have ability. You use some for an offering to, to the Lord for His work. As we think of how we use all of our abilities and time to praise God, we can also use all of our resources in praise of God. When it comes to giving a part of it, 
to the Lord and an offering for his work, there are some principles he has laid down in his word. We're going to take a look at a few of them in our Bible hour after this. For now, we want to get to the foundational principle. Our offerings to the Lord are an expression of faith. And you might say, sure they are. I'm expressing thanks to the Lord who made me and who did the work to save me from my sin. It's true. But there's another way that our offerings are an expression of faith in the Lord. It expresses trust. As we give a portion of what God has given us back to Him for the work of spreading and sharing His Word, it expresses trust in the Lord that He'll continue to care for all of our needs, even though we've just given up a portion of what we'd normally use to, to, to pay for things. Trust. God will continue to care for us. We hear this thought as we hear the words from 2 Corinthians chapter 2 that are our fourth lesson. But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. Each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. This is the word of our Lord. We'll sing the reply. 